Hello everyone, I hope it's not too late to wish all of you a very happy new year. So I'm Madi Malachali Madi Alagan from Management and Science University in collaboration with Forensic Sarvayoni India, a YouTube channel. And I'm here to share with you uh, some information about immunoassay. So immunoassay is a biochemical test. It is used widely in areas of cosmetic, in um, food industry and also to aid legal investigation because often when we find an, uh, an analyte or a substance from crime scene, we do not know what is the exact element and what is exactly inside it. So we need to find out what is there so we can uh, proceed to legal proceeding in court. So today, in today's video, I will share with you three main points of immunoassay. The principle, the types of immunoassay, there are a variety of them, and also the use of immunoassay. Um, it's a lot to share with you today and I have to be um, mostly accurate and factual with what I share with you. So I have a script over here. So if you notice me looking that side, just know that I'm looking at a script. So I will start with the principle. So immunoassay is a biochemical test. It measures the presence and concentration of an analyte in a solution with the use of an antibody and antigen. So we all know what an antibody is. It is a natural molecule produced by our body to protect us. So the principle is an antibody and an antigen, it binds together. They are like a lock and key principle. An antibody is only, um, its affinity is high towards a certain antigen. So for you to, you can use this same principle uh, in, in chemical investigation to identify what which are the analytes that are present in a solution. So immunoassay can be run in multiple steps with reagents which are called uh, which are often called as separation immunoassay or heterogeneous immunoassay or we can also use by mixing reagents and sample by making uh, physical measurements such as non-separation immunoassay or homogeneous immunoassay. So you have to know that in order for us to um, know how much of a concentration, how much of an analyte is in there, in the solution, we have to use certain other reagents or chemical luminescence which can indicate how much are there in a certain solution. And that is the um, main fact which separates the types of immunoassay that we use. It based on what type of detector that we use in order for us to read the analyte that we are searching for. So moving on to the next part, um, I will talk about the principle of immunoassay. Like said before, immunoassay uses two elements, antigen and antibody, to detect a certain element in the solution. Uh, the solution usually that we collect from Crime scenes are blood, urine, and saliva. So let's say we want to detect a certain drug, the presence of drug in the blood. So we use this certain antigen to detect the presence of the drug. However, uh, we need certain measurement, certain signal for it to tell us how much of a drug is present in the blood or in the urine. Without this exact information, we could not um, aid the investigation because someone could have taken a lesser amount of drug or a lesser amount of alcohol let's say and it is actually not uh, lawfully wrong to do so but when it exceeds a certain concentration it is lawfully wrong to do so so in order to prove this in a court proceeding we need to detect and give a proper report which includes the concentration of it so we need some signaling and this signal should be measurable and easy to detect. We don't want to uh, sit, you know, chem chemists don't want to sit in a lab and uh, take two to three days to read a signal. So we want something that is usually easy to see. And that is what actually makes the difference between the type of uh, immunoassay that we use. Many labels are detectable because they either emit radiation, produce a color change in a solution, fluorescent under light or can be induced to emit light. So there is four types. One is it induces a chemical change, it induces a color change or it uh, emits radiation or it induces emit uh, light. So these four types, remember these four types because later in the types of immunoassay, we are going to use these basic four types to categorize the immunoassay. 
So I hope you got the idea, the principle of it. So uh, antigen is actually a natural uh, immune response to our body to um, get out the toxin, the unwanted uh, unwanted elements from our body. But how is it used? Uh, is it make use in in the field of uh, in the industry and field of investigation? Is that we use certain animals to induce the production of these antibodies and then we collect them to be used. So for example, we use rat, sheep, um, dogs if I'm not mistaken. We use those animals to induce these certain uh, antibodies and then we make use of them uh, in the uh, investigation field. We also modify these antibodies so that whatever analyte or whatever uh, antigen that we are targeting is specificity. It increases the specificity we are are specific to that certain entity so I hope I'm clear with that and I'm moving on to the types of immunoassay so first I would like to talk about radio immunoassay the radio immunoassay is the oldest is one of the oldest immunoassay a radio isotope is attached to an antigen of interest and bound with its complementary antibody so you have to note here it, this is a, a process which is carried out of the Analyte out of the solution. So, um, radio isotope is attached to its antibody, and then a sample with the antigen to be measured is added. It competes with the radioactive antigen, kicks it out of the binding spot, and replaces it. After washing away unbound antigen, the radioactivity of the sample is measured. The amount of radioactive signal is inversely related to the amount of target antigen. The health hazards of using radioactive substances caused a movement towards safer methods because since this is the oldest one uh, and it emits radiation, it is often not the safest method to use. But the principle here is we bound the antigen to its antibody, a radioactive isotope antigen to its antibody and we place this uh, complex into the sample that we are going to test. So whatever antigen is, that is in, already inside the sample will compete with the antigen that is already bounded to this complex and they replace it. So we wash out whatever remaining antigen that we have, um, we have initially added to it and whatever complex that we have now will emit a radiation and we measure that radiation and we'll compare with a curve or a data that is already there to see how much of a concentration there is. So this is called um, competitive. It's competitive, it's competing with the other antigen we have that we already have to give out information. So moving on, moving on, counting immunoassay. In a counting immunoassay, polystyrene beads are coated with many antibodies complementary to the target antigen. During incubation, the beads bind to multiple antigens and group together in large mass. Some beads remain unborn because um, beads are usually put in a large amount. So whatever antigen that we have, let's say we put in 10, uh, 10 beads and then we only have 5 antigen. So this 5 antigen and 5 antibody will make a large mess. The other 5 antibody is remaining. It does not have any uh, antigen bound to it. So that unwanted uh, beads will be washed away. The entire solution is passed through a cell counter and only the unborn beads are counted. The number of unborn beads is inversely proportional to amount of antigen. So let's say we put in 10 beads and then the unbound beads are 5. That means 5 antigen are present in the sample. I hope I am clear with that. So moving on, fluoroimmunoassay. In a fluoroimmunoassay, the antibodies are labelled with fluorescent props. After incubation with an antigen, the antibody-antigen complexes are isolated and the fluorescent intensity is measured. So here, from the name itself, you can tell that the, the uh, factor that we are measuring is fluorescent. How much the sample that we get after the incubation, how much it fluoresces. The amount of fluoresce is proportional to how much concentration there are in the questions analyzed. Moving on, chemiluminescent immunoassay. So the principle of chemin luminescent immunoassay is same as fluoroimmunoassay, but the reporter here is different. Again, the detector here is different. If the if for fluoroimmunoassay you we used fluorescent, here we used chemin luminescent. So this basically means that the antibody antigen compound the bound here it emits a chemical reaction to emit a light. 
The difference lies in the mechanism of kicking the electron up to higher energy in the first place. In fluorescence, this is achieved with certain frequency of light. In chemiluminescence, this is achieved by a chemical reaction. The reaction requires an emitter and a co-reactor. A mag magneto-actuated chemilum chemiluminescent assay was developed to detect the presence of Zika virus in patient samples. So this is an example of how it was used. But it basically means you have to have a chemical reaction for it to be detected. So like I said, there are variety of drugs, variety of means we want to investigate. So they all cannot be detected in the same way. Some might not give you a fluorescent, but it can indicate a chemical reaction. It can start a chemical reaction with a certain antibody. So we use this method when that comes in handy so that we can detect it easily. Moving on is enzyme-linked immunoabsorbent assay, in short form ELISA. In ELISA, the antibody is linked to an enzyme. After incubation, the antigen unbound antibody is washed away. The bound antibody enzyme attached to the target antigen is observed by adding a substrate to the solution. The enzyme catalyzes a chemical reaction of the substrate to produce a quantifiable color change. So here in this method, three things are involved. Besides antigen and antibody, there is an enzyme. So this enzyme binds to the antibody and we place it inside the sample. Uh, inside the sample and after that it is antibody and enzyme will bind to the antigen and then we will uh, incubate and then run through uh, run through a process where we add substrate for the antigen antibody enzyme and the substrate to go through a chemical reaction this chemical reaction will emit a color change so through the color change we can detect how much of a concentration of the uh, uh, question analyte is there in the sample so again we have a set of data where we can compare the color change moving on we have monoclonal polyclonal sandwich immunoassay so this is like us uh, when it says sandwich that means there are two parts and then there is the uh, antigen in question i will explain to you in a typical micro titer plate sandwich immunoassay a monoclonal antibody is adsorbed onto a plaster micro titer plate. So a plate and then a monoclonal antibody is placed there. When the test sample is added to the plate, the antibody on the plate will bind to the target antigen for the sample and retain it in the plate. When a polyclonal antibody is added in the next step, it also binds to the target antigen. This binding reaction can be measured by radioisotopes as in radioimmunoassay or by enzymes as in enzyme immunoassay format. So a plate is placed here, a, monoclon a monoclonal layer is placed on the plate and then the sample in question is added to it and then a polyclonal, um, uh, a polyclonal layer is added. So whatever antigen that is present will bind to both polyclonal and monoclonal. Where the plates are, let's say the space on, on the plate which are empty, which means there are no entity. So this creates a three layer uh, component which we call as sandwich. So to detect it, we can either use the same method we use in radioisotope or the same method we use in ELISA, the enzyme one, where we have to add another substance for it to emit light so that we can measure the intensity of the drug or the chemical compound present. So depending on the immunoassay format, the degree of the color can be detected and measured with naked eye. Uh, in home pregnancy test, that, that's a good example. Uh, we usually test um, pregnancy with our urine where we have this little strip and then we test it. So the color change indicates whether you are pregnant or not pregnant. So this is the same method like immunoassay which is being used in our daily lives. So that's a very simple example for you that you can understand. So we have arrived at the final stage of uh, my sh sharing session today. So I'll share with you some of the application of immunoassay in industries. First of all, it is widely used in food industry to detect allergens and other um, allergic stuffs that are present in food. It is to aid the labeling section of food where a chemist should pass a food that it is safe to use or we have to uh, label, warn the consumers that there are certain type of food that are present that might be allergic. For example, like 
egg whites or milk. It has the advantage of being able to test for oils, egg and milk, uh, immuno acid. So secondly, the advantage of using ELISA for detection of viruses is that they can be used in developing countries where infection rates are often very high and can reach the most vulnerable groups with the on-site testing capabilities. So immunoassay, like I said before, you can notice that immunoassay is not, is not a high-costing procedure or you need high intelligence, high um, safety measure to take to carry out the process. So this can be used, can be taken in advantage of certain countries where their budget is not very high for um, testing their people for certain viruses. So um, ELISA especially can be used in those countries, can be used for their advantage. Moving on, ELISA was the first universal testing kit for HIV. It's a little fun fact. Following that, the detection of West Nile virus is carried out by immunoglobin M. Antibody capture ELISA of patient's serum or cerebrospinal fluid. So, uh, West Nile virus is actually, uh, it's actually a mosquito-borne disease. And um, once it attacks the nervous system of a patient, it indicates that it's a very high level of danger. So, ELISA can be used to detect that and um, yeah, further uh, proceeding can be taken up after that. Moving on is the VND. VND is a valid, uh, it is an avian virus affecting many domestic birds that can be passed to humans and depending on the strain present, VND disease can vary in severity from moderate respiratory dysfunction to diarrhea and other life-threatening symptoms. Next is the uh, detection of platelet antibodies in serum used to identify patients suffering from disorders such as idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. So this is a disease, it is an autoimmune disease where your blood refuses to clot. So, um, you know, autoimmune disease, it is not possible to cure them entirely, but by detecting them at an early stage, we can avoid uh, life-threatening incidents. And finally, identification of cancer biomarkers. So even for professional, even for experts, it's hard to tell you, to look at you and tell that you have certain type of cancer. But using ELISA immunoassay, we can detect the amount of uh, certain abnormal level of antigen or antibody in the body and maybe they can advise you if you have uh, ovarian or breast cancer. These are the two types of cancer where immunoassay is widely uh, being in used. So we hope that the use of immunoassay can uh, develop in coming years and can be used widely in, uh, in both to help investigation, also to help in a, a medical field. So I think that's all from me and thank you once again for this opportunity I to get some information, some knowledge about Immuna SE and I hope to see you all soon. Stay safe and always wear your mask. Thank you.